again, lead the NFL in uh, paying their defense over their offense year after year after year, is that Sean McDermott was getting a lot of heat last year. Remember uh, the Tyler Dunn article and some of his quotes in the locker room. But I don't see Sean McDermott as an old, rigid, stubborn coach. And the reason I don't see it is because I'm watching him evolve. He's not digging in. He's not old school. I think Sean McDermott has listened to his critics. I mean, they drafted a tight end uh, last year, first pick. This year, their first pick overall. Uh, I think it was second round was a wide receiver. James Cook was a second round pick. So the first four or five years there, um, you know, after the Josh Allen pick, they were going defensive guys heavy in the draft at the top of the draft, their first picks. Now they've evolved. They're going heavy offensive guys. He's also moved off multiple offensive coordinators. He understands the value of the right OC. Uh, He's also let some really good defensive players go. I look at Sean McDermott at a guy who's evolving. He's not being old school. He's not digging his feet in. He's trying to get... Josh Allen help first. A lot of teams don't draft tight ends in the first round. He's going tight ends. He got a running back in the second round. A lot of teams first, second round. They don't want to get running backs. They want to get that stuff later. So they're using their draft capital on offensive guys very early. They're moving off first round guys as defensive guys. He's moving off defensive players. He keeps finding Joe Brady appears to be a great fit with Josh Allen. So like Mike Tomlin has not had a playoff win in six years. Belichick didn't have it in his last five years in new England. And it just felt like they kept doubling down on defense. And I, it feels very old school to me. And I don't, I don't think Sean McDermott's old school. I think he's evolving. Um, I, that's what I'm watching. Here's Sean McDermott after the win last night. We've got a lot of new players and, and whatnot. And, um, you're never really sure. There's so many unknowns starting a season. And, uh, you know, we'd come back the first week of the season and win. And, and I think that was a step for us, for any team, to be able to say that uh, you can do that, you can play in close games. And then this game, being able to come down here in a short week, to your point, uh, at their place and, and, um, and play, play like we did. Uh, we, played, we played our style of football. Yeah, I mean, no penalties, not having turnovers, uh, running the football, offensive line dominance. It was like it wasn't that totally Josh Allen reliant. And the reason being is because of the rookie receiver, the other tight end, the running back. They've done a good job. They, they, you know, listen, they've won four straight AFC East titles. I didn't have them in my top 10 week one because I just I wanted to watch them. I just let's just watch. And then I watched them play Arizona. I'm like, eh. It's just too Josh Allen. I, I was totally impressed last night. Like that's, that's a Super Bowl team. And I, and I do feel with Josh Allen, he's too talented not to win one. Um, but that, that's, that's as good a win, not just because of the outcome and not just because of the separation with Miami. That's about as good a win and as hopeful a win. If you think the Bills should win the Super Bowl, that's as good as it gets. Big running game, no penalties, no mistakes, didn't have that many tonal yards, not a lot of Superman plays. It was just help Josh. It's like we said this about Luka Dantich. Like you start looking at this schedule now and they got a tough one against Baltimore. I mean, they've, they've got, they're going to need some balance here when they face Lamar, CJ Stroud, Aaron Rodgers. I don't know. This schedule looks like it gets really tough in November, but, um, I thought that was really impressive last night. Arizona, the first half, you weren't quite sure what they were. It's week one. Nobody knows what anybody is. Wait, wait, Colin, hold up, hold up. Are you sure that the Bills are very good with these two results? Because if you look at the holes in that run game last night, Miami just had no defense. I mean, the Jags went up and down the field against them in the first half right. on Sunday. They wore down. But I'm looking at the Josh Allen passing numbers. In week one, he threw 23 passes. In week two, he threw 19. Yes, that's This perfect. is a totally different Bills yes. team. Than the ones of yours. That's past. exactly what I but want. But is this sustainable? Throwing against 20? good teams. Well, it's, they're two. I mean, Arizona is a, a five-win team. Miami looks like a six, seven, eight-win team. Well, what I would say is, get past the result. They're, when you're throwing 19 and 23 times, the Bills are sending a message. What we're doing is fun. It's not working. It's not working. So the Bills are pivoting to we need to become more balanced and more run first. The other thing, as good as Josh is, every season, December on, it's four degrees. You, Thurman Thomas, you have to run the ball. This is not Miami. We always talk about Miami's great in September. It's warm in Buffalo for about two home games. 
And then all of a sudden by November, you got snowfall. So to me, the way to win with this organization is power running in defense. Okay. And with McDermott, we know the defense is always going to be fine. I mean, it, it, just what they do. They're always going to be above average defensively because of Sean. But I look at those passing totals and I'm like, stop worrying about winning MVPs. 23 to 24 passes with Josh Allen. You know what that shows me? Discipline. Okay. Like the offensive coordinator is disciplined. So He's I love this conversation. Remember in the summer, we said there was a wide receiver bubble happening and these guys are overpaid. You cannot pay your quarterback and your receiver this much and expect yeah. to continue to win. What did we see in week one, Colin? The fewest 300 yard passers in week one in over a decade. There was only two of them. And we saw a lot of 100 yard rushers. I think of the most since like 2011 or something. Are we seeing a pivot from passing league heavy to let's go back to the run. We've overemphasized passing. Yes. Let's pivot back to running. Yeah, I think there's two things here. When you pay quarterbacks what you're paying them now, protecting them becomes even more vital. So you do not want your quarterback throwing 45 times a game. You're trying to protect the number one asset. That's always been the case. Now, now you're paying guys $500 million. The second thing is everything is cyclical. In the NBA, it's all about three-pointers. Then you go to the playoffs and the mid-range teams, the teams getting buckets, you know, you, you get to the playoffs and it's like, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of teams not shooting threes, winning games, right? The NBA, it's a small league, small ball. Now it's all the big guys dominating the league. What the Celtics have is length. What Denver had, uh, Denver had length. What Dallas to the finals had, bigs, length. When they acquired it at the trade deadline, they were a better team. So everything is cyclical mm -hmm. in sports. It used to be in baseball, you could not strike out. Now it's the ground balls, the killer, get the ball in the air. And so in the NFL, you had this, you had this time where it was like, now it's all about passing. And I still think that's the way to win. But the difference is quarterbacks now are so expensive and you have to pay them because all the rules now favor the well, quarterback. Well, what you don't want is that 40 passing attempt number. Okay. That's the number to avoid. You want your quarterback throwing 38 or less. Go look at Dak. Yeah. The minute Dak throws 40 or over, losing record. 38 and under, winning record. Well, the only thing about paying the quarterback, okay, Jordan Love goes down in week one. We'll see what the health status is. Could be out three to six, maybe he's back. Yeah. Tua goes down in week two. Th those teams are cooked if the quarterback's out for a prolonged period of time. Well, so I, I listen, I, I'm I'm hopeful that Tua's okay. I like th 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 I that like contract looks horrible. Two well, weeks in. That's, and I know I, you had to pay him, but there's other options. Well, no, I think Tua's contract, I said it before. I think a lot of media members, I remember when Tua signed, I read a lot that day because my take was I wouldn't have gone there. I think I said it on the show. I was not comfortable based on his concussion history and his inability to win cold weather in January. I said, I couldn't have gone there. Dak, I'm actually more comfortable with because Dak's a bigger, stronger guy. And I don't look at Dak as a guy that can't win North with, with Tua. It was always like, you know, I just don't think, I mean, look at all the good teams in the AFC, Baltimore, Cincinnati, Kansas city, Buffalo. It's all cold weather. You're playing in January. None of them have domes. Where in the NFC, a lot of the good teams yeah. north have domes, like Detroit. And so I had repercussions. And what happened last night was the elephant in the room. Nobody wanted to talk about it, but it was something that, you know, I mean, he had three concussions. And by the way, before the concussion, he was awful. Well, I mean, he was. The interceptions he was, were. Yeah, he like, was struggling. Maybe it's just Buffalo, because against Buffalo, he always stinks up the joint. Yeah. And um, But I think... This is why you need to have these conversations. I said this when, when Joe Biden was still president. I said, you have to have hard conversations. This can't be the president going forward. That can't be the candidate. Like, have hard conversations. It's painful. You like Joe Biden. Democrats eventually had hard conversations. You have to. The Tua thing, as you were going to sign this contract, there were people that were like, hey, let's not get into the – no, 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 no. You got to consider everything because once you go four or five years at $45, 55000000 million, it changes the entire organization. So, you know, you just I mean, we're happy to have got paid, obviously, like no, no, I, 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 I'll I mean, go back to it. I think great. there should be an amnesty clause. I think I think I would like to see Tua retire. That's what I would do. He gets all his money, but I feel bad because distracted. What distractions? Um, you know, they're kind of like a 1980s hair band. You know what I mean? They, they have a really good time. They lean into it. They don't always seem like they're focused, but they never disappoint. They put on a great show. And I think Kansas City is great for the league. It's like it's nothing against the Patriots dynasty or Alabama's dynasty or uh, the Tim Duncan dynasty. It was it was like Shakespeare. You knew it was historically great, but it was like, eh, 
Could you guys lighten up a little? Art Val, lighten up a little. A little dry. Uh, Kansas City, the Chiefs, the Warriors with Steph, uh, you know, Pete Carroll with USC, the Cowboys in the 90s, they're rock stars. And they're, I think it's good for the league. Uh, by the way, the week one ratings, last two years, ratings going up and up and up and up and up. And Kansas City keeps leaning into it. And I, I just think they're really, really good for the league. Really